This video will detail the second phase of the fabrication of the molds for my Adirondack chair. In the last video, I showed the fabrication of creating the first phase of molding the first layers or levels of each of the prototype sections. This video will detail the fabrication of the seven different rubber inserts, which will form the second layers or levels of each of the prototype sections for casting purposes. This mold of the back seat slat assembly has three rubber inserts that precisely form and locate the three structural supports needed to monolithically unify the five seat slats with the three structural supports. I want to provide understanding on how and why the rubber inserts work within this process. The casting process begins by casting just the first level which in the case of the back seat slat assembly, sees us just casting the five seat slats. We then install or place the three rubber inserts, which allow us to be able to cast the three support pieces into a one-piece monolithic casting, which provides for the exacting placement of the three structural support pieces onto the five seat slats. Detailing the next two molds, the one for the left side legs, armrest, and stringer assembly, and the one for the right side legs, armrest, and stringer assembly. In the case of both of these molds, they only require one rubber insert to form the stringers onto the separate assemblies. The last mold is for the casting of the bottom seat slats and apron assembly, which require two rubber inserts to form the structural supports, which tie together the seat slats and apron into a one-piece monolithic casting. I will now go into how I made the seven rubber inserts to conclude the complete molding of the four separate prototype sections of my Adirondack chair. I hope you enjoy and thanks for watching my videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. In this video clip, I'm anticipating mounting the three support prototype pieces onto the mold. Prior to beginning that, I must cast the five seat slats first, as the rubber that will be poured to capture these items actually rest on the back side of the seat slats, so I have to have them casted. I decided to cast the slats using a rapid set drywall plaster as it wouldn't be able to bond to the existing rubber nor to the support prototype pieces. Keep in mind that I'll have to do this on all four molds. I will now show you the pre-casting of all the first level components for each of the molds. Okay, I'm going to mix up small batches of this drywall mud. That's, that's all I need now because I'm pouring the rubber to this insert area and then the block's going to be here. So I'm making a rubber around this stringer. This is the stringer I'm trying to, to form. Okay, so both, both of these areas, this one, the block is here and here. So I've got the first coat, which is about three quarters full, maybe a little bit more. I'm going to do a skim coat after this dries because this might crack or whatever. Uh, the skim coat won't and I can get it perfectly up where the legs should be casted to these two surfaces skimming it. Now this other side is done too. Again just to the block area. But this is all filled with first coat. I'm going to do that with the other one over here and then I'll be back to you. All right, I got all the plastering done to fill the lower areas on all the molds that I needed done. I didn't need to cast the whole thing, but in some cases I did. At any rate, we're picking up this image, this stringer is what we're making a rubber mold. We're making a mold inside of a mold that's gonna be detachable, what I call an insert. And you'll see that once we get casting. So these two have the stringers ready and they're screwed, not yet, but they're, they're holes that actually go through this plywood area that was once a plywood, it'll be now just a rubber insert. It's not gonna hurt the mold at all, but I gotta fix it to where it doesn't move because it's right where I want it. Now in this case, we have the two supports that actually get screwed to the side of the chair and that's just to keep the top from 
slats from uh, migrating, but that's going to unify all these in the secondary casting. So those are going to get screwed down. And then here I didn't use a cementitious device, but again, all these slats here would not be unified unless this inch and a half by three quarter inch piece was placed in with two screws. And here I've screwed right through this joint area. And that's a lot of thick rubber and it's not going to hurt the mold or castings. Nothing's going to happen because of it. But I need to fix down all of these pieces so that they don't move. Next, I'm going to show you the blocks that actually help form the insert. Because I don't want the rubber pouring the whole area. So I'll be back with you after I get that. All right, so now what I've done is I've got the form in. This is going to be one insert that goes around this. So when you cast the lower section... Once you've got that filled up to where it's supposed to, then you're going to put the insert in and it's going to be void because that's not going to be there. And that's what allows us to form that specifically and accurately right where it goes. At this point, I just put a block here and this is screwed outside of the mold where this and this are screwed right through into the hard mold. That's what's grabbing the screw. I just took a long drill bit and drilled down to the size of what the screw needed to thread into the cement. The rubber wouldn't be capable of holding it. So anyway, those have, those have got a form. That's going to be one insert. Same with this one. Now this one has three separate inserts. There's one right here. And that's inch and an eighth because that's a support piece. This is inch and an eighth plywood. That's an inch and an eighth piece. So again, that's another insert that goes all the way around. Once you've casted your slats, you then put this insert in. You can form that and know exactly where it goes. The same with this. This little shape is what's going to key us in. Here this this being the rubber being right up against this and this is what's going to locate this this gets located because of those odd elements and then up here at the top this rubber is is going from an inch and an eighth that's only a three quarter inch piece it does it's not a support piece it just really ties this the uh the slats going vertically all together and it's going to be monolithically casted but again that's going to be an insert and because of the radius when you put the insert in you'll know exactly where to put it because these these blocks aren't going to be here there's not going to be any rubber those will be gone so this keyway is going to locate this the bottom of the mold is going to locate this and the rubber where it's got this radius in this indent is what's going to locate that now here we only have two inserts one to pick up this this piece one to pick up this piece i've got to do a little clay up here and a little clay up here to fabricate the white piece up i gotta get the apron and the top slat which i it's 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 an angle and i couldn't figure a way to do that real easily so i'm just going to clay it and that then rubber around it and you're gonna i'm going to start the, the clay here in a moment and then i'm going to start doing the rubber and i'll turn back on the camera Okay, so I got all the screws out. So now, so the piece comes out real nice and easy. And again, you've got your original mold, nothing stuck to it. And all of this uh, plaster that's in there now is just going to come out. We didn't. It. I did oil this before, but this is this is just. Well, it looked real soft, but anyway, it's nothing. But it all comes out of the mold. Everything that was clayed, oiled, whatever, it's all coming out. And I'll clean this mold up. And like I said, I'll have the profiling of this rubber just by standing it on the table getting the pieces all out so all this excess has to come off and it's going to look nice like this side 
this side is flush to the actual piece that I wanted to cast and I've got to do that profiling on this which I'll do like I said with this sander disc and we'll get that all look nice I'll get rid of all the slag all right so I went from this messy little bit of business to this I just razor knifed off all the extra slag and then I sanded the areas that are real rough like this to where they had a smooth profile. And keep in mind, this is the underside of the chair. You're never even going to see it. But this piece is designed to tie all the slats together on both sides. And then if you'll notice, the front apron and the top slat are all molded together. They're one piece. So when this piece comes in and you, you've casted this below, and now you're going to cast this little strip, this will tie all of this together and it'll bite the apron and the top with a good amount of mud. I increased the thickness, widened it out to where it would definitely catch it. And again, it's underneath the seat. You're not even going to see it. All right. Well, I've got the mold all cleaned out. I even went through and because I'm out here, I wasn't in the warm room. I ground the edges of the mold and the rubber, the edge all the way around here because I hadn't been able to tend to that yet because it wasn't out here. I'm not going to grind back in the warm room, but everything's ground cleaned. Okay, working on the second one now. The outside perimeter is made by the mold where this block and this block have given me an edge. And this elevation means nothing. We're trying to cast this piece, so we've got a lot of extra rubber here that I'm going to cut off. And then I'll, I'll profile this shape down to where it's got a nice trollable flange when we go to cast this. Right now I'm just going to demold it and start working it. And keep in mind, this is still screwed down, but the, the rubbers aren't. But that in this side is perfect and nice. I'll clean it up just a little. There's a little bit where it went underneath, underneath this uh, stringer, the rubber, because I didn't caulk that. So there's a little bit of an edge there that needs to be dealt with. But we'll just trim off all the excess and, and profile this down. I'm going to leave this in here. Because what I'm going to end up doing is after I've gotten the slag, I'll put it back down and make sure that it's just right. Now keep in mind, this is on the inside of the chair, the slats go, but I'd still like it to look good. So I want this edge to be really nice on this insert. All right, well I got that piece all slag cut off of it and I ground down all the way around. I just used a piece of metal to lay on the uh, gray cement. I still want to use that. I'm going to make another mold or more molds and uh, didn't want to have that getting scratched up. It is taped, but I put a piece of flashing up against it and then sanded it down to there perfectly. All ready to go. I just got to clean out the mold. Here's a photo of the four completed molds with all seven rubber inserts installed complete. As of this picture, I was ready to start casting a chair, and, and I did. Here are the photos of the first casting, but unfortunately, I stopped further putting it together as I wanted to make another four molds, as I want to be able to cast two chairs per day, and I can't do that with one set of molds, so thus the reason for making two sets. But After completing the second set of molds, I went back and I used some of the molds to make this footstool for the Adirondack chairs that I've been making, which is... Kind of a neat little addition. I appreciate you uh, watching my videos. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did so, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel and look forward to more videos. Thanks. Bye.